Many artists struggle to grow on social media, and I've got some inside dope to show you exactly how these platforms work and how you can put them to work for you. No hacks, no shortcuts, but once you understand how this actually works, then you can put any platform to work for you instead of you feeling like a slave to the platforms. And I know it can feel overwhelming or like complete BS that you are made to feel like you have to be on every single social platform. That's not true. And I want you to know that this is the exact method that I use to get monetized on Instagram, TikTok, and attract paid brand deals and partnerships and collaborations with some major brands, even with just my little following. You don't have to be big for this to work. In fact, you could start from zero. So let's just get right into it. First, before you just go launching new Instagram channels or threads or TikTok or whatever, ask yourself, who are you trying to reach and why? If you're only connecting with other artists, I mean, if your audience is just built up of other artists that are all trying to achieve the same thing, and that can be fine if you're just here for community, but your reach is gonna be very limited. And reach means how many people are the platforms actually showing your posts too. I'm going to teach you how to fix that. I hear artists judge themselves and other artists all the time. They say things like, they only have 200 followers, or I don't have enough followers to even matter. Those are real quotes, by the way. You have to stop thinking that way, and you have to start thinking deliberately and creatively when dealing with these platforms. Second, figure out why you want to be on social media at all. Now, there's a couple reasons you as an artist may want to be on social media or building a social media account. The first reason is just to allow your work to be seen uh, by multiple people and to be enjoyed, and that's pretty wholesome and great. Or you're actually trying to build a small business from your art which can support you. And that can entail selling your own artwork, doing commissions, getting hired for different jobs, or even paid to post on social media. So you need to ask yourself, who are you speaking to when you're on these platforms? What is your target audience? Now, for example, if you're an artist like me, then speaking to other artists like you right now, that's totally great, that's fine. But if you're trying to build a business selling things to other artists, not so lucrative, trust me. <laughs> By the way, we have some killer merch down here uh, for artists uh, floating under the video or link in description. But if you're an artist that's looking to sell paintings of flowers, say, or some other niche, you're gonna wanna find the places, the people, and the communities where those people are hanging out. It might very well be that none of those people are on Instagram, they might be on LinkedIn. So why would you put any of your energy into Instagram if you knew that, that all those people were on LinkedIn or Facebook? Now, some people in business call this building personas, and that's the common way of thinking about it. But it's a bit flawed and outdated, actually, because it lacks the authentic personal context of people's lives. What's going on in their life when they're buying that flower painting from you? What is the real job to be done? So I want to challenge you to think about what the job to be done is. And what that means is, why did they hire your painting, specifically your print, why did they buy that t-shirt from you? What job was that doing for them? Why did they hire your product? Why is there a community built up around this niche that you're researching? You're trying to find the thing under the thing, and sometimes there's multiple things under the thing. Let's just use the flowers topic as an example here, because it's pretty generic. But what if you found out that there was this group of people collecting these little mini flower prints? And you might assume that they're gardeners or old ladies, but you come to find out in conversations with the actual people that many of them share a certain story. And maybe in this example that I'm giving you, you found out that they bought that specific little mini flower painting because it reminded them of a loved one or that specific flower had some meaning in their life. And suddenly a whole world of context and messaging opens up to you if you're really looking for it. Really unpacking those whys of your target audience is going to be the key to your social growth. And you know what? I really hate saying target audience. <laughs> it sounds pretty predatory in a certain way. I don't like it. It kind of makes me cringe every time I hear it, to be honest with you. So let's just call it, let's instead call it your people. You're going to find your people for your artwork. For example, one of the biggest mistakes that artists make is they just launch all these social media accounts. They post on their Instagram, their Facebook, and they just decide to randomly post and throw their artwork out there and say it's for sale and nobody comes and then they feel bummed out about it. 
because they're going to get a lot of followers like their Aunt Sally or their cousins or friends from high school or college or maybe other artists. And the thing is that those people really don't have an interest in your art. They might just think that, you know, you're an artist and that's great and that's cute. They think it's such a nice hobby. Ugh. Those are not the people that you want to be following your work. So why do you want to be on social media in the first place? Ask yourself that question. And it's probably brand awareness for your art and it shouldn't be made to make you feel lousy. Figuring out who your ideal audience is going to be, who is your ideal customer, that's the first real big key to unlocking your own growth is to find your people. Now, it helps to know your personal pillars or your brand pillars for your art and what's most important to you. That will help you figure out all of this fairly easily. I have another video somewhere on this channel about how to put this pillar exercise into work for you. Check that out. Next, ask yourself how many social platforms do you actually freaking need? I know that it can seem overwhelming to have to check all of these platforms all day long. And then you might end up feeling like you have no time to do the actual artwork or you're spending so much time on artwork that you got no time to check all these uh, platforms. And that can lead to a lot of like personal burnout. And as a creative, you want to totally avoid that. So I suggest picking one to three platforms to build your art or brand on. Let's call that your stack. You're going to choose your stack. Now you can change those in the future, but learn to try to get really good at one before trying to tackle them all. So once you know your reasons for being on social and who you're speaking to, next you wanna understand how these platforms actually work. What is their hidden agenda? And they do indeed have a hidden agenda. And it's this. One, all of these platforms simply want you to use their platform. Number two, all of these platforms want to keep you on that platform as long as they can in one session. Again, they want to keep you on as long as they can in every one session. They want you to use the functions of that platform as often as you can. And that's the real secret to how all of these algorithms actually work. I know this for a fact because I've had personal conversations with both engineers from YouTube, Meta, and Apple. And they all say the same things. And you're gonna see a ton of videos across YouTube with uh, so-called experts, but it's really just their best guessing. And most times it has nothing to do with actually what's going on at the platforms themselves. You'll never really know what they're doing behind the scenes. And that's why when you hear something like, hey, here's a hot tip, use a trending sound to take off on your viral videos. And by the time you do it, it doesn't work for you. It's because it's complete BS. It was pointed out to me from someone who worked at Meta specifically that the platforms themselves are telling you what they want you to do. Maybe not directly but or out loud, but it's right in front of you, hidden in plain sight. And it's all of the features and tools. And you know when they change a little menu item somewhere and you're like, that used to be here and now it's there and you're looking for it. It's because the engineers who are building these platforms want you to use these tools in a specific way. They're constantly testing. Are they going to use a trending sound? Maybe they were only testing that for a few weeks. Do you understand? So one of the big takeaways for me was that I was told that the ideal session time for a user was 15 to 20 minutes on Instagram and Facebook. And so now the machine is learning and trying to get you to have increased in-app session time by serving you more things it thinks that you'll love. This is why that you keep falling into rabbit holes and meme traps. Every time you use one of their tools or options, and every time that you're doing any action or using one of their tools or options, it's sending a signal to the machine, to the algorithm. This is machine learning. It gives them the data to help improve their products to increase session times of users that are similar to you. Kind of spooky, kind of creepy, I guess, to some people. In return, they reward you by showing your account, your posts, to more people. That's your impressions, that's your reach organically. So for example, do you just post once a week on social media? Are you just kind of randomly using the app? Do you accidentally just fall down random rabbit holes or meme traps? That's 90% of people that are using social media are just randomly using it for checking out on their friends, seeing what drama's going on, and general escapism. And that's where you, dear art friend, come in. Because your channels, your artwork, your profile can be an escape for somebody else. It can be an escape for that audience, your people that you're trying to speak to through your art. And now you can use this knowledge to let social media kind of work for you. 
it actually made being on social media a lot more fun for me again when I look at it through this lens. It's all about taking deliberate action. And this is how artists and creators can really conquer social media and build minimum viable audience or true fans. And this is how you put the machine to work for you. Here's the formula. First, you're gonna start using whatever platform you decide very deliberately. And the first thing you need to remember is every action that you take on the social media sends these signals. The more signals that you send or that end up happening because of you, the more the platform loves you, the more the algorithm loves you. And it's gonna reward you by showing your profile to even more people organically. That's how it works. So you need to think about every single action that you're doing on social media very deliberately. I wanna challenge you not to turn on your social media platform unless you're willing to dedicate a straight 20 minutes on that app performing the following actions I'm about to tell you to do. And think about that a second and why I'm asking you to do that because you're hitting that sweet spot for the ideal session time. When the machine knows that you're on, probably somewhere around between the five to 10 minute mark, it's gonna start beginning to show your content and profile as suggested to other people that are on the platform. Why? Because it wants other people to take actions that you will notice and in turn stay on the platform. Example here, have you ever been like ready to turn off your social media app and then suddenly you see a notification that you got a new follower or someone commented on your post or something in your feed makes you think, okay, I'm just gonna check this out for one minute before I'm done. None of that is by accident. This is how it's actually working. Most importantly, and you're gonna hear this a lot from other experts, is to stay consistent. Now, there are tons of different schedules that you can choose for posting on social media. Can you grow your channel with just one post a week? Yes. Can you grow it faster the more you post? Absolutely. But it's up to you to find that balance in your life so that you avoid burnout. The following method can work on any platform. Now, the actions on these different platforms may be a little bit differently, but the thinking behind how it works is all the same. This should take you probably only 20 to 30 minutes every day once you get up to speed. Step one, just try to find a schedule that works for you. Let's say that you're just starting out and you're gonna post three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Step two, stick to the schedule like clockwork. When you post, try to post the same time every day. Don't listen to those what are the best times to post on social media types of articles out there. The best time to post is the best time for you. If you have no idea where to even begin, just start at noon every day. Schedule your posts for noon. Let's just say you're doing this on a 30 minute lunch break. Put the sandwich down, take a walk, do this. Step three, this is the method to the madness. This is a framework that I developed for myself called 555-1212 easy to remember. This specifically works great on Instagram, LinkedIn, or anywhere that you can search hashtags or trending topics. For this example, let's just pretend it's Instagram. And you have to try to do it in this order, and there's a reason. Set a timer for 20 minutes, either on your watch or phone or old school little dial thing, and see how much you can actually do in 20 minutes. Don't leave the platform in that 20 minutes. Do the following steps. The first five is Find five strategic hashtags in your niche to follow and engage with. Now you wanna find the tags with a pretty decent amount of posts every day. The perfect tag for this would have several posts per hour. Once you've found your tag, go into the tag and sort it by most recent top posts. The second five is you're gonna engage with five posts in each of the five topics that you just picked. You're gonna like that post, comment and be truly authentic about it. No spam or copy paste. Because if this is a topic that you're truly interested in and that you're making artwork for, you should definitely be able to find something authentic to post and say or to spark the interest or conversation. Even just ask a question. The third five is you're gonna engage with at least five from your actual feed of people that you're already following. So many people just kind of skim through their feed and kind of forget to engage with the posts in their feed. The platforms want you to engage with the posts in your feed. Okay, so we've done the five, five, five. Now for the first one. One is you're going to post your post. Post one post or reel. Now the first two. You're going to follow at least two people from across those five topics that you chose. The next one, 
One is you're going to start one new conversation in a DM per day. This doesn't have to be weird. It could just be DMing someone who just followed you and saying, thanks for following me and asking them a question about their work or what they're doing or what they're up to. I found that this sparks some wonderful conversations and connections. The last two is you're going to save or share two posts per day from across those five categories that you just looked through. So every step that you just took sent a signal, maybe multiple signals to the platform. So let's add it all up. If every action you just took counted as a positive signal sent to the machine, you just sent hundreds of signals for the machine to learn from. And you've achieved or gone over the ideal session time for you as a user. The platform itself will start to considering you a super user a user that's more engaged if you do this more often. And think about this, you just connected with or touched 23 individual people in that one session, if not more. If you did this every day for a week, you're gonna to be touching 161 individual people. That's 644 people you touch in one month. Now imagine if you did this twice a day. Here's your challenge for this week. Do not fall down the rabbit hole. Be deliberate when you're picking up and using the social media platform. And don't open that social media app unless you're willing to schedule 20 minutes to be on it in one sitting. A bonus result beyond the growth that you're gonna achieve is, your feeds are gonna start beginning to feel more curated and you'll feel better about actually spending that time on social media. You may even look forward to the process. My feeds used to be full of random bullshit and political battles and drama and I just, social media didn't make me feel great. But since I've started trying this process, it's really begun only showing me the things that I engage with and bringing me offers. I just did a collaboration with the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates because they saw my scribble challenges on TikTok. And one word of warning here, something I probably should have mentioned was avoid sending negative signals. Just as you can send those positive signals to the machine, you can also be sending negative ones. So be mindful not to do these things. Don't comment negatively, no trolling. If you see some sort of drama going on, zip it, move on. Totally avoid commenting on any kind of controversial post or drama. No drama, none, ever. When you see it, resist the urge to post or throw your two cents in, just move on. Stay on mission, stay on target. Okay, volunteers wanted here. I want you to try this for a few days and then come back here and comment or send me a DM and let me know how it went for you. I would love to show other artists that this actually works and it can be beneficial. If you found today's video awesome, please like and subscribe to the channel. And here's a couple other videos that you may like. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you back here real soon. Back to the drawing board for me. Go grow on social.